That song is awesome. Thank you guys for bringing it in. That's cool. Such talented songwriters up on this stage. Wow. Written by Dione and Michael. Yeah, I saw it up on the thing. <laughs> Way cool. Well, one church down, six songs to go, right? <laughs> All right, if I could trouble you all to get these lights on for me, that would be helpful. Perfect, thank you. So I know I've shared this with you before, but I just think it's so cool. A couple of monkeys in a laboratory. They do a little task, and the lab tech gives each one a slice of cucumber. And they're so happy with their piece of cucumber. Do the task. Get the cucumber. Do the task. Get the cucumber. Do the task. This one gets a grape. This one gets a cucumber. Cucumber monkey looks over at grape monkey. Eats his cucumber. Do it, does it again. Grape, cucumber. Looks over at the grape monkey. One more time. Does the task. Grape, cucumber. He takes a cucumber and he throws it at the lab tech. <laughs> True story. I've seen it on video. Everybody wants fairness. Even monkeys want to be treated fairly. I mean, the cucumber was fine until one of them got the grape. And he just said in monkey lingo, that's not right. That's not fair. Why does he get a grape and I get this stinking cucumber? Which was a great cucumber until that grape came on board. I mean, we all want fairness. Problem is, I don't think we always know what fairness is. For example, most of us would define fairness as equalness. He gets a grape, so I get a grape. That's equal, that's fair. Let me tell you a story, something you'd probably agree with. George and Henry both work at a factory. They both have the exact same job. They both come in Monday at the same time, they both leave on Friday at the same time, and they do the same work. They should get the same pay, right? And you're thinking, of course right. That's only fair. Maybe. But what if George works harder than Henry? What if George actually produces more? than Henry? What if George has been at the factory for 20 years and Henry's been there for two years? What if Henry calls in sick once a month? George hasn't called in sick in five years. You still think it's fair they get the same pay? Uh -uh. See, what often happens is we don't have the whole story, but we think we do. Great cucumber, fair. George Henry, same job, fair. And we get all up in arms. Everybody should be treated fairly. Well, I think it's true that we should all strive to be fair, that we should want things to be fair, but we should be very cautious about being opinionated about fair because, frankly, we don't always know what fair is. Maybe you've heard this in the news a lot late, lately. Equal pay for equal work. Women are getting significantly less money for the same jobs that men do, and that's not fair. George and Henry? Grape and cucumber? I don't know. I guess it depends on who you talk to. So I did a little research and found this very interesting video about equal pay for equal work between men and women. Let's uh, kill the lights and uh, get the sound up, and let's listen to another PragerU video on fair pay. For every dollar a man makes, why don't businesses hire only women? Wages are the biggest expense for most businesses, so hiring only women would reduce costs by nearly a quarter, and that would go right to the bottom line. Don't businesses want to be profitable, or are they really just bad at math? Well, actually, it's the feminists, celebrities, and politicians spreading this wage gap myth who have the math problem. Here's why. The 77 cents on the dollar statistic is calculated by dividing the median earnings of all women working full-time 
by the median earnings of all men working full-time. In other words, if the average income of all men is, say, $40,000 a year, and the average annual income of all women is, say, $30,800, that would mean that women earn 77 cents for every dollar a man earns. 30,800 divided by 40,000 equals 0.77. But these calculations don't reveal a gender wage injustice because they don't take into account occupation, position, education, or hours worked per week. Even a study by the American Association of University Women, a feminist organization, shows that the actual wage gap shrinks to only 6.6 cents when you factor in different choices men and women make. And the key word here is choice. The small wage gap that does exist has nothing to do with paying women less, let alone with sexism. It has to do with differences in individual career choices that men and women make. In 2009, the U.S. Department of Labor released a paper that examined more than 50 peer-reviewed studies and concluded that the off-sided 23-cent wage gap may be almost entirely the result of individual choices being made by both male and female workers. Well, let's look at some of those choices. Georgetown University compiled a list of the five best-paying college majors and the percentage of men and women majoring in those fields. Number one best-paying major, petroleum engineering, 87% male. Number two, pharmaceutical sciences, 48% male. Three, mathematics and computer science, 67% male. Four, aerospace engineering, 88% male. Five, chemical engineering, 72% male. Notice that women outrepresent men in only one of the five top paying majors by only a few percentage points. Now consider the same studies list of the five worst paying college majors. Number one, counseling and psychology, 74% female. Two, early childhood education, 97% female. Three, theology and religious vocations, 66% male. Four, human services and community organization, 81% female. And five, social work, 88% female. Here, it's the women who lead in all but one category. Even within the same profession, men and women make different career choices that impact how much money they make. Take nursing, where male nurses, on the whole, earn 18% more than female nurses. The reason? Male nurses gravitate to the best-paying nursing specialties, they work longer hours, and disproportionately find jobs in cities with the highest compensation. Now here's how one expert on nursing compensation, Professor Linda Aiken of the University of Pennsylvania, sums up the data. Career choices and educational differences explain most, if not all, the gender gap in nursing. The Department of Labor paper concluded that once these differences are accounted for across all professions, the unexplained wage gap is somewhere between 4.8 and 7 percent, almost identical to the 6.6 .6 percentage gap found by the AAUW. But why is there any gap at all? No one knows for sure as both the AAUW and the Labor Department concede. There are so many variables that drive wages that no single study can cover them all. Few wage gap studies control for variables such as dangerous work environment. Men are vastly overrepresented, for example, on oil rigs. And here's another variable. Men are more willing and able to work long hours without advance notice. According to Harvard economist Claudia Golden, even if two lawyers have the same education, same specialty, and work the same number of hours, firms pay more to someone who is willing to always be on call and ready to be in the office when the firm needs them, as opposed to wanting a more regular schedule. This isn't sexism. It's just common sense. With more realistic categories and definitions, whatever wage gap remains would certainly narrow to the point of vanishing. So it seems that business leaders aren't bad at math simply because they don't only hire women. Those who claim that for the same work, women earn 77 cents on the dollar compared to men, on the other hand, are not merely bad at math, but at telling the truth. I'm Christina Hoff Summers of the American Enterprise Institute for Prager University. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click here. Go on, click there. <laughs> so I wanted to give an example of fairness 
where people are saying one thing is fair, but we don't get all the facts, and then somebody else says, no, you're not getting all the facts, that's not fair. And my advice to you right before playing that video was, be cautious about you know, just trying to ram the fairness rod down somebody's throat. We don't always have all the facts. We don't always know what's fair. So we should be careful with, and not be opinionated. So Jesus also gave a lesson that touched on fairness. This week's words in red come from Matthew chapter 20. Read to you a parable he told. Kingdom of heaven is like this. Once there was a man who went out early in the morning to hire some men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them the regular wage, a silver coin a day, and sent them to work in his vineyard. He went out again to the marketplace at 9 o'clock and saw some men standing there doing nothing. So he told them, you also go work in the vineyard, and I'll pay you a fair wage. So they went. Then at 12 o'clock and again at 3 o'clock, he did the same thing. It was nearly five o'clock when he went to the marketplace and saw some other men still standing there. Why are you wasting the whole day here doing nothing, he asked them. No one hired us, they answered. Well, then you go and work in the vineyard, he told them. And when evening came, the, older, the owner told his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with those who were hired last and ending with those who were hired first. The men who had begun to work at five o'clock were paid a silver coin each. So the men who were the first to be hired came to be paid. They thought they would get more, but they too were given a silver coin each. They took their money and started grumbling against the employer. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, while we put up with a whole day's work in the hot sun, yet you paid them the same grape you paid us. Oops, threw that word in. Listen, friend, the owner answered one of them. I have not cheated you. After all, you agreed to do a day's work for one silver coin. Now take your pay and go home. I want to give to this man who was hired last as much as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do as I wish with my own money? Or are you jealous because I'm generous? And Jesus concluded, so those who are last will be first and those who are first will be last. They were not treated equally, but they were treated justly. So you could say, it's not fair. Perhaps you're right. But had they been treated fairly, that would have been unjust. Because those guys, they got paid by the day. So if they couldn't find a job until the last hour of a day, they wouldn't have had enough money to go home and feed their families. And everybody said, that would have been fair. You see the problem? Fairness or equalness doesn't always equal justice or justness. Each worker was paid a wage agreed to in advance. That was fair. The new guy was given mercy and grace. That's good. The appearance of unfairness simply comes in with jealousy, comes in with selfishness. What I get paid is irrelevant to what you get paid in so many situations. Imagine if the parable had ended like this instead. The workers saw that the boss paid the newcomer the same amount as they themselves were paid. The people were amazed that a boss could be so caring, kind, and generous. They were thankful to have found such a great man to work for, and they all lived happily ever after. Right? Wouldn't that be great? But that's not how it goes down. Everybody's always complaining about something. And usually we don't have all the data. Now this parable that Jesus told, I can't say it was about fairness. I don't know that he told the parable just to be fair. He said the kingdom of heaven is like this. Well, how is the kingdom of heaven like this? I'm not sure, but let me give you something that comes into my mind. Imagine you're raised 
and a believing home. From the day you can remember you've been taught about God, you believe in God. You worship God and you've done your best to honor God. You have served him your entire life and now you're 75, 80 years old and you know your time is short and soon you're gonna go meet your maker. You're all right with that. So Jesus, back to his days, gets put up on a cross. Next to him are two bad guys also put up on a cross. They're mocking him and tormenting him and teasing him along with everybody else. But sometime during the time up there, one of those guys on the cross realizes he, he was wrong. He, he's bad, but Jesus, Jesus is good. And Jesus can actually save him. And he asks Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into paradise. And he said, truly I tell you that this day you will be with me in paradise. I object! I've served you for 70, 80 years. This guy, he just comes in at the last minute. He gets to go to heaven too. That's not fair. What would be fair? Well, maybe it's not fair, but it's just. And then again, it is fair because how many of us have earned our right to get into heaven? None of us. We don't get to heaven because we served God for 70 or 80 years. We serve God for 70 or 80 years because we love God. And it's the right thing to do. And this guy, he's a little late to the party. Thank God he realized before it was too late how to get saved. We shouldn't be upset that he got saved. We should rejoice. But that stinking grape gets us every time. And you know it as well as I do. We, we preach it. Where there's breath, there's hope. If you're not yet dead, there's a chance for you to be saved. And we rejoice if somebody right before they die gives their heart to Jesus. We celebrate it. Well, maybe next time somebody gets promoted and you don't. I don't know, maybe you can rejoice with them. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. That's not fair. So my conclusion then is God's not fair. And that's the name of my lesson this morning. God's not fair. And I thank God he's not. God is just. And just is better than fair. Because if God was fair, then what would you do with Psalm 103, verse 10, that says he does not punish us as we deserve. He does not repay us according to our sins and our wrongs. We don't get what we deserve. If we did, that would be fair. But we don't. We get grace instead and mercy and salvation, which is not fair. And I thank God for it. All right. So we do have a sense of fairness. Heck, even monkeys apparently have it. But the problem is our sense of fairness is askew. Our fairometer is broken. And we should recognize that. Next time we think or hear that something isn't fair, just cool your jets. Maybe it is fair and you don't, know, you don't have all the facts and you don't have all the figures. And maybe it's not fair. Maybe Paul gets blessed over Austin or Dallas. That's cool. Praise God for Paul. Rejoice with those who rejoice, the scripture says. And weep with those who weep. And as James says, mercy triumphs over judgment. Let's pray. Lord God, help us to be fair, except for when it's better for us to be just. And help us to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. To celebrate the blessings you give. Love isn't fair, it's just merciful and gracious. So I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be merciful and gracious and to celebrate with those who receive mercy and grace. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.